Hello everyone and welcome back to more The Manish Cap for the Game Boy Advance. And in this episode we're going to be getting further through the game by doing a whole bunch of side quests this time. So you know in the last episode where all I did was basically the Cuckoo minigame? Well instead in this episode we're just going to be doing a bunch of side quests. Well actually not a bunch, a lot, because we've got around 40 of them to complete. Although I'm going to do a bit of editing to save some time and all that. The first one we want to do, however, is try to use our moments and dig around the place. But because of this, I know that I like to dig around and it's a lot of fun. But it's probably not a lot of fun for you guys when you watch me dig around because, you know, it takes a bit of a while and you want to see more of the gameplay footage. So to do this, I'm going to cut ahead until I finish digging around. Okay, so I've pretty much just dug up everything in this area, and all we did is we just got a bunch of king's stones. But you know what I was saying, you know, sometimes it's just fun to be able to do things like dig all the way. It's kind of similar to Sailing the Seas in Wind Waker. And yes, I can actually talk about Wind Waker now, because I've been playing Wind Waker HD. Because you know what I was saying in the last episode, I've actually never played Wind Waker. So playing the HD, experience, uh, HD version is going to be a new experience for me. And I've got a moment my way back. Okay, now that we're out of there with everything mole mitted, let's just say. I don't know any other way to put it. How about we fuse kingstones with candy? And you're probably going to think, which one's candy in here? Well, she's this girl over here. So if you have any trouble finding out who candy is, just look at this and you should be able to find it out. Now, what she's going to do is she's going to do a kingstone fusion and it's going to cause uh, part of this lake bit to dry up so that we can access the moments cave but i don't want to go up there just yet as we're gonna have to do another side quest that leads to that place anyway so we're gonna come back to that a bit later i guess but what we're gonna do for now is rent out a house yeah believe it or not first we go to get figurines we've saved some chickens um what do we do we deliver books and now we're renting out houses to people I think it's very generous in this game, I tell ya. But simply, all we have to do is fuse kingstones with one of these goddesses, and that is Faror. Because those three people you saw there are actually Din, Meru, and Faror. They were from A Link to the Past, but they weren't given the names then. The, the only game where they were given their official names was in Ocarina of Time, just to let you know. So if you want to know about Din, Meru, and Faror, just look up stuff on Ocarina of Time. I mean, I don't really have to say it here. Wow, I just had the best idea. I can rent out my house for some extra cash. So basically that triggers an event where a house will appear and there's a guy outside that will tell us that it's for sale. So how about we go over and see? What? What do you want? Why are you bothering me, kid? Huh? Oh, my name's Gorman. I'm trying my hand at real estate. Turns out it's a total pain. Like right now, I'm looking for a tenant, you see. But the thing is, I can only rent to a woman single occupancy. Occupancy, I think you're supposed to say. <laughs> Too many tenants would make the place dirty, and they'd be loud. <laughs> Agree. I like things nice and quiet, see. And this is all just too much hassle. If you find anyone who can rent this place, would you let me know? So with that, he's going to tell us to try and find somebody, and I've been saying so with that a lot during this LP. Well, yes, it's during most of my LPs. It's like it's my catchphrase or something. But we are going to choose out of these three girls which one we will rent the house to. And... You know what, I'm just going to go for Nehru just because I feel like it. I have no purpose. I'm just going to go for Nehru just to be different. So when we go back outside and go back in, Nehru's gone, meaning they're left here. Things just aren't the same around here now that it's just the two of us. Maybe I should go pay her a visit sometime. So pretty much Nehru has just left them and gone to her new home. So let's go see what she's like. Oh. <laughs> okay, I don't really have to go on about that. Oh, hello Link. I sure do love it here. Thanks again. If you have an empty bottle, I can put one of my homemade charms inside. Just ask any time. So I guess this is one thing that I could show off, but... 
Well, actually, you know what? To be honest, I'll shut off later because, um, what it is, when you get these goddesses to their new homes and all that, well, they're really, they're not really goddesses in here, they're just ordinary people, but when you get them to their new homes, they're going to give you, like, these bottles that help you raise your attacks and defense and all that, but I've completed the game without it, and I find it a bit easy to do so without them as well. So I guess I'm going to be showing off, you know, the special powers that they give you in a bonus video or something. But that's what I think, so I'm not too certain. But simply with that, the one thing we need to do next is very weird. To get the new house, we have to uh, fuse king stones with Bremer over here. And yes, I actually looked up what the characters' names are because I am such a saddo. I'm feeling really motivated now. I could probably build a good sized house in a matter of minutes. Again, this is going to trigger another event, and it's going to be really weird how it works. Because as you can see, if we go down, there'll be like this minish place, and if we speak to him, he'll say this. I'll build here, I think. And when we go inside the house, and exit back out again, the house is built. Slightly. But when we go out, then we go back out again, that was said wrong. The house is fully built for some reason. Nice house, huh, kid? It's brand spanking new, I tell ya. But you sure built it really fast, that was like in five seconds. I wish that could happen in reality. But I just need another tenant, a single woman like before. Well, if you know any nice young ladies needing a home, let me know. Indeed we will, so I guess I will see you guys back at the place where... Din and Barora. Okay, this time I'm going to choose, uh... You know, I'm going to choose Barora because I know what Din's power does, and I just think it's a bit overused. So I'm going to give Barora a bit some... a bit of limelight. Though it's just her now. Being all alone is... well, lonely. I'm going to find myself a nice home too. Yeah, but that's not until much later. Seriously, after all the side quests I'm doing, Din is still not going to get a home. So, stuff her, I guess, or something. <laughs> what am I saying? If we speak to him, though, he'll say this. I've lined up a sizable pile of cash for my rental properties. Maybe I should start breeding pets next. Um... Okay, that was really weird. So, of course, you know when we go in here, for all will be in our home as well. Welcome, Link. I really love this house. If you have an empty bottle, I can put one of my homemade charms inside. There's that word again. Just ask any time. So, you know, basically the three goddesses, they'll give us something in our bottles, but like I said, I'm going to show it off in a bonus video. With the ability to swim with our new flippers, how about we head back in here and go over to this area, because there will be a piece of heart. So, you know, once you get the ability to swim, if you come back to the place where you got the power bracelets, then you're going to find a piece of heart, which is very useful if you ask me. Again, you know, um, with this being side quests and all that, I'm going to try and do a lot of edits to make it short and that you don't have to see, like, I don't know, 30 minutes of content of me just wandering around doing a bunch of side quests and all that. But one thing we want to do is this. Unfortunately, we are going to meet probably the most creepiest Zelda character ever, in my opinion. I think his first appearance was in Majora's Mask. And I think you know who I'm on about. So, let's see what we have at the top of here. I'm not looking forward to this at all. Oh god, no, it's Tingle. Is that green cap and green clothes? Are you, perhaps, a fairy? I knew it, I knew it. Tingle wants to be a fairy too. Actually, Tingle has some kingstones, you should, you know. And I have given kingstones to my brothers too. If you confuse kingstones with me and each of my brothers, well, I don't want to give it away, but you'll get something very, very, very good. He emphasizes a lot in his dialogue. Good luck, Mr. Fairy. So, we're going to meet his brothers. Great. They're multiplying. 
And all we have to do basically is use our king stones, which will cause an event to happen. And like he's throwing confetti on like his animation when you can use king stone. It will cause a door to open, and we need to open four of them, meaning there are like three of his siblings left. So how about we go out and find them? And again, I'm going to do a bit of editing here. The first of which is in Lake Hillier, so what we want to do is go over to this bit and... Hmm... Actually, do I or don't I? No, actually, I was debating whether to get a piece of heart on this bit, but I'm going to do that when we start to go into Lake Hillier a bit more. So as you can see, we found him and I can't be bothered to read what he says. There's always asking for is basically a Kingstone fusion. So, let's fuse Kingstones with him. And there is the second door open up. We could go into them right now, but I just want to fuse Kingstones with every single one of the Tingle people. So that, you know, we can just go there and get everything done in one hit. Next, we want to head into Long Long Ranch and make our way to, you know, where Marin and Terran are. I think I got that right, because I remember putting it up as an annotation. Although I'll put it up as if I've got it wrong, which is probably most likely. But pretty much, Tingle is located, well, one of Tingle's brothers, should I say, is located at the top of the cave. And you know, it's basically the area that we pushed this block out of the way when we duplicated ourselves. And got the chest. That was actually quite a while back. Time sure flies when you do making LPs. Oh great, I did the wrong one. <laughs> Probably the first time that I've failed in choosing the right Kingston piece. Actually, I could be wrong about that as well. I don't know why I keep thinking I'm wrong about things. It's a bit weird. There is the third door open, meaning we've got one more left. And you know earlier where I was saying I don't really want to go and get the thing that we got when we fused Kingstones with candy? Because we can get other things along the way, because Tingle's there. So pretty much, let's just make our way up to the top and to Shrilby Highlands. So as you can see there, Tingles, one of Tingles' brothers is right there, and we have to make our way over there. Yeah, that was very condescending the way I said it. But before I do that, I want to do a bit of mole around the place. Here, if that's a word. <laughs> if you guys are against the idea of me speeding up mole sections to make it a bit faster, just let me know in the comments, because I'd like to hear a bit of feedback. But basically in here all is is just a bunch of berries. Pretty worthless, but I thought I'd show it off anyway. Why not? And mole mitten again, but this time I'm not going to dig everywhere because I know that I've got every single item in there. So with that, how about we go and get the very last Tingle sibling by digging through this hole. I just have to dig every piece I find. But you know when I was digging around earlier, we came across another one of these stone marks. So again, you know, this is why I just wanted to do the candy thing later, because we could do a bunch of things, like grab another Goron and all that. But with that, we are going to get a third Goron. Hmm, this wall is pretty tough. I don't think just the two of us can break it. But that doesn't mean we're going to stop trying Goro. Sorry about that, I had a bit of an interruption right there. I thought I smelled some Gorons around here. What are you guys up to? Hey, give us a hand breaking through this wall. Goro. So pretty much with this, we are going to get another member to help us break down the wall. All we need is one more, and the wall is gone. But with the area all dug out, how about we go up the ladder and fuse Kingstones with the final Tingle sibling. Good grief, I was about to click the wrong one again. Let's hope that doesn't happen. There 
they fit perfectly. Tingle would be so proud of me. And pretty much, that's all of the doors done, so how about we go and collect it? Well, really, all we have to do is enter the four doors, but I'm going to cut ahead, so see you guys in a bit. Now that we are back in North Hyrule Field, let's go in each of the doors and climb down the ladder. And if you ask me, why did they put the ladders there? Surely it would have been a bit easier if they put the ladders, I don't know, in front of us when we climb down? Because, you know, when you just go in, you usually just roll and climb down the ladder here. But instead, you have to go all the way around. It's not really a major issue, but I do kind of think, why is that there? It doesn't stop me from playing the game or anything. Again, I'm just saving another thing, it's like a catchphrase. And another reason why I wanted to do this is, as well as getting a new item, we're going to get a bunch of kingstones and mysterious shells. And not just any ordinary kingstones, I mean like red kingstones, which are really rare ones. And of course, in this one, I think we'll find 200 mysterious shells. I just want to check to see how much I've got now. 490. Okay, it's just, I want to make sure that with the mysterious shells, I don't hit the maximum, which is 999. Because otherwise, you know, if I collect chests later on in the game that contain, I don't know, like 500 mysterious shells, it'll be a waste. So if I was you, um... Remind yourself to try to not collect, you know, 999 mysterious shells, as it will make the figurine collecting a lot harder than before. Well, actually, you can do it however you want, just as long as you have fun with the game. But with all the switches uh, pressed, let's go down and see what is in this chest. Behold, the magical boomerang. Hold the button you threw it with and use the rectal pad to control its path. <laughs> Again, I like how, you know, some of the dialogue in most Zelda games, they break the fourth wall, like they talk to the player. They talk to you about the controls, the buttons you're pressing. Well, to be honest, I'm playing this on an emulator, so I'm using the directional pad and the X, C and V buttons and the keyboard. But, even so, you know, same thing, if you're playing this on the Game Boy Advance or something, that's what it'll pop up with. But, the Magical Boomerang is an upgrade of our previous one. When we throw it, um, instead of just throwing it in a straight line, if we hold down the button, we can then control where it's going. That makes it a little bit easier. And believe it or not, I actually completed the game without this. Well, to be honest, the magical boomerang is actually optional. You don't really need it, as there are alternatives like, uh, picking up bombs and throwing them and all that. But still, it's pretty good. Going back to the place where we went to Swift Blade by, you know, fusing ourselves, we want to fuse kingstones with him, as something good will happen. And good thing I captured a lot of red kingstones, because trust me, you're gonna need them if you want to do most of the side quests after you've beaten the Fortress of Winds. Because they're very useful. And if you ask me, we're gonna get a lot of stuff, like heart containers and all that. In fact, I probably think we're gonna have, I don't know, 13 to 14 heart containers at the end of this. So there's definitely a lot to do. But basically, if you do that, he'll open up this thing in, um, Caster Wilds. I was about to say Wind Ruin, but of course that would be wrong. I want to get my de destinations right after all. Moving back from where we were, you know, when I was on about, look at the depth of the place, because it has really good depth perception on Minish Cat. We want to climb down this ladder and, you know, go to the door that's next to us, containing the guy that said bombs. Bombs are the answer. And, of course, Moment the Cave. However, instead of just, you know, cutting ahead, um, to the bit where I just moment everything, I guess I could talk about one thing, and that's Wind Waker HD. I've got to say, I'm very impressed by Wind Waker HD on how they've done it and all that. The visuals look very good. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm sure the visuals look really good in the GameCube version as well, but I've never played the GameCube version, so I can't really say about that. One thing I will say that's kind of disappointing, though, is this, is the fact that... Whereas, in the GameCube version, they had this thing called, uh, the Tingle Tuner. And what that would do is... It will allow you to connect your Game Boy Advance to the, uh, GameCube, so that way you could use it as... this guide or something to help you out with dungeons, like you could hover above the air, um, you could make yourself invincible for a bit, and you know, it's just basically, you could do it with a friend or by yourself, which is really good. But instead, in the HD version, they decided to make it um, a Miiverse bottle that you use to send things 
on me verse and all that. And personally, I would have preferred that they stuck with the Tingle Tuner. And don't get me wrong, because, um, you know, it may be impossible for the GameCube and Game Boy Advance to hook up to, uh, the Wii U and all, but... I still think they could have done something like, I don't know, the gamepad could have been, um, the actual main console, you know, on the TV, and you could connect it with your 3DS, because, I mean, they did it with Monster Hunter 3 Ultimate after all, so I don't see why they couldn't do it with Wind Waker, but still. Again, another interruption, but where was I? Oh yeah, Wind Waker HD. I do like how they gave, like, a second sale to make you sail the seas a bit faster, but personally, I will say, it kind of ruins the experience, and I'm glad that they made the second sale feature optional, because if it was permanent, that would just completely ruin the experience of sailing around the seas. Because you know in the GameCube version, you had to control the wind? Well, with the second sale, if you just press A twice, you, the wind is basically the sail. Like, anywhere you go, you'll always be travelling at maximum speed, and it feels more like a speedboat instead of sailing the seas. So I'm definitely glad that, you know, I don't have to use it. Because most of the time, I just like controlling the wind and feeling part of the adventure. I mean, it is called The Legend of Zelda, The Wind Waker, after all. I don't know why I'm ranting on about this. This is becoming more of a rant instead of an LP. But with me talking rather long about Wind Waker, how about we fuse this Kingstone? And I'm gonna choose the right one, hopefully. Yes, I did. For a second though, I actually had to look to see what shape it was, because honestly, that one looked out of place, personally. But still. We're about to get the final Goron for this bit. That's a tough wall. The three of us together wouldn't be... The three of us together couldn't even break it. Ooh. I smell delicious stones. They're right on the other side of this wall. Can you give me a hand? Goro Goro. Seems that each of their names are like Goro, Goro Goro Goro, and just Goro Goro. Basically all their names just seem to be Goro, but with different repeats or something, I don't know. Still, that's another wall broken down, and we have one more left, but that will be used later. Because there's an item that we get at the end, and it's kind of disappointing if you're not familiar with the Zelda universe. But if you've played a lot of games like me, well, I haven't played every Zelda game, but you'll understand why it's useful. Here's yeah, a Minish, we want to go and enter the Minish Woods once again, because believe it or not, we've got to go back and fuse Kingstones with someone. And there's one thing I don't get. When we talk to Gentari, he'll say this, Leave through this door here, it will take you out of the forest quickly. We did that like, I don't know, 10 episodes ago, so... I don't understand why you didn't really see us do it. Again, you know, some NPCs are just unaware of what we're doing. It's not a problem, I find it rather amusing myself. But still, with that, what we want to do is head into this blue home. Oh wait, no, sorry, that's the wrong one. Uh, I think it's the shoe, actually, I could be wrong. Oh, I remember now, of course, yes, it's in this pot. What we want to do is head up here and fuse kingstones with this minish. And let's see what we're going to get. What we're actually going to get is optional, just to let you know. And pretty much, you know, it just activates this lily pad that will take us over um, to the hole that's available in Castle Wilds. And we'll be going there in a bit, I reckon. Next in out of Minish Woods, we now want to go to um, over here as a Minish, because with the ability to swim, we'll be able to access these three holes. So first of all, let's see what's inside the left one. Ice. Great. Okay, meet a thing in the game. These are ice physics, and if you ask me, they're not very well done. Because <laughs> simply, what will happen is, is if you move... I'll give you a demonstration, actually. If you move forwards, you know, you'll slide away, just like usual in any other game. But if you move, and then you hit your sword, he just stops dead in these tracks. And if I just keep doing it, you know, he'll just stop right there. But when I let go, we will just carry on again. So it's kind of hard to predict your speed when you just stop completely. I mean, it's like here. See, look, I can't really control where I'm going while I'm trying to strike enemies. Yeah, you'll get used to it eventually, but, you know, it takes a bit of practice, I guess. I mean, there are worse ice visits. With that, we get a red kingstone and a piece of heart. 
like I said, we're going to be collecting a lot of piece of hearts in this episode. Alright, now with that, we want to go through the centre one, I think, because we will find a blue king soon. Oh, that's useless. But still, in the right one, basically, we just want to take out these enemies and try not to stand on the preps for too long because they will fall. I'll even prove it to you if you want. They, you don't want to stand on them too long or else you will fall to your death and blue kingstone again. Great. Blue kingstones are kind of rare, but you know, they're the same just as like green kingstones. You can, if you thrash around in the grass a bit, you might find some, but it depends about what you're doing, I guess. I know it was completely unnecessary to cut it here, but we want to exit out of Minish Woods and go over to Eastern Hill. And grab on this mushroom to launch us over to the little house that we came across before. Because you know where we went to see this Minish, but we couldn't really do anything. And if you ask me, this is a really useful Kingstone fusion here. One thing I don't get is this, actually. Look at that. You see down there that the, the, the wall we bombed isn't, you know, bombed because it's full up, basically, of rocks. But I'll show you what happens when we go up there. It may show it saying, like, oh, we've got to blow it up and all that. And in my practice file, I kind of got confused thinking, oh, God, did I forget about that? Well, guess what? When we go back up there, it's gone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that was, you know, a bit of misprogramming right there or something, but... Well, I don't even know if that's a word. But you get what I mean. Either way, it's just a little bug or something, and it doesn't really bug me. Oh, great, that was, that was terrible. Let's just climb up this beanstalk and see what's above. A piece of heart. Very handy indeed. And on top of that, we get 200 rupees and... 200 mysterious shells, so 200 rupees, 200 mysterious shells, and a piece of heart. That is very handy indeed. We will take that. If we go back to the area where the farmers were, where we fused kingstones with them, we now want to mold it through this cave. And since I've gone on about Wind Waker, there's not much to talk about here, so I'm just going to cut ahead. There is a kingstone mark here, so what we want to do is, you know, the usual, just fuse our kingstones with it. And get another Goron, because we're on to the next bit. There was a chest there we could, we could actually get, but I really want to do that when all of the walls are breaking, just in case. If you know that chest contains something like, I don't know, 500 rupees or something, because I don't want it to be a waste. I've already reached like over 800 of them. Oh, thank goodness. Help has arrived. And that was really weird. It was like walking really slow of his feet, but somehow he was walking really fast. Huh, that was a bit weird. And the last thing we're going to do in this episode, I reckon, is mole it through this cave. And I think it's pretty short, so I'm not going to bother, cut bother cutting it here. And we're going to come across a light light. Great. If I get eaten by this, my shield is going to get stolen. But luckily I didn't. And pretty much we just come across two chests. And is it worth me digging around? You know, I might as well, because, I mean, it's quite a small cave. I'm only going to cut ahead on the ones which are quite long and all that. So just keep note of that if you're going to wonder what's going on in this LP. Well, it's been around, I don't know how many minutes, because I've just basically done, like, four recordings in this to make sure it doesn't take up too much memory. And in the next episode, we will be finishing off the side quests, I reckon. Hopefully. So take care guys and I will see you in the next one.